This is part six on duct design. We are going to look at the total effective lengths for the return ducts. Now, typically you start with the return that is furthest away from the furnace. And you call that return air number one or simply R1. And then each return coming back is simply R2, R3, R4, and so on. Now R1, as we see, comes into the basement at this point. And if you look closely, you'll notice that it is a rectangle with a double cross in it, which means that that is a second floor return. And if you recall from the previous video, R1 is actually in bedroom number four. The symbol for R1 is a rectangle with a um, a line with a short dash and a longer line. This series of lines tells the installer which side of the wall the grill is on. And so they know to install the grill in the uh, bedroom number four. You'll notice here our number one, which is in the hallway, shows the grill being in the hallway. <clears throat> and um, sorry, this is a typo. These are all typos here. <coughs> um, the master bedroom will have uh, the grill on the bedroom side. So this is actually bedroom run number, return air number four, and return air number five. So return air number one starts here. And so there's a grill, and so now the air goes through the grill and turns down into the stud space. And so that type of grill is a wall grill. And so that wall grill has a resistance of 10 equivalent length, and it is a D fitting. So on your worksheet, where it's looking for the grill opening to stud, we would have a D and then 10. 10 representing the equivalent length and the D representing the fitting uh, identifier. So now we know that the, the air is now traveling down the stud space. It goes through the plate opening and gets into the first floor wall. Now you'll notice that in the case of the master bedroom, the master bedroom return comes down here, and so because it's not over the wall, it has to jog over and then get into the top of the wall here and then make its way down to the basement. In the case of R1, because these two walls are right above each other, the return air can come straight down. Therefore, there is no offset here in the ceiling of the first floor. So that the only offset occurs when the return air actually gets into the basement. And so at this point, the air comes out of the stud and now enters the joist where it turns horizontally and now runs over to connect to the furnace, uh, sorry, to the ductwork. So at this point, we've only got one stud to joist or joist to stud. And so we've got one A fitting, it's a type A fitting, which corresponds to this one because our partition is perpendicular to the floor joist. The air is coming straight down, makes a nice easy 90, so we need to account for 15 feet of equivalent length. And so that's, the A is the fitting identifier and 15 is the attributed equivalent length. Now the air needs to enter the duct at this location. And if you recall, uh, in group uh, three, when the air from the um, from the furthest return air away from the furnace 
enters the duct, there is an associated equivalent length of 25 feet. And so since R1 is Uh, at the end of the duct, we would attribute 25 feet to the uh, air going from the joist into the trunk. And so we've got our uh, duct to joist or joist to trunk. It works either way. We've got an A1, and that is 25 feet. You'll notice that this fitting is A1, whereas this one is A2. <clears throat> Excuse me. We, we've got the turbulence effect. And if you recall, that deals with the intersection of the different return airs. So, the air from R1 enters the duct here, and as it's flowing back towards the furnace, it has to intersect with R2. So there's the first intersection point. As the air continues, it intersects with R3. So for R1, we have 40 and 40, so that makes 80 feet of turbulence. Now we've got a trunk fitting. You see we've got two trunk fittings, but this one is uh, a special column for transitions. Fittings are these types of elbows. And so since our return duct system doesn't have any of these elbows, um, we can leave that particular spot blank, or I often like to just put a line through there to indicate that we've considered it, but there is no fitting to be addressed there. Now, the next column is for transitions, and we've decided that we want to put in a transition in our return duct system. And so you can see that we're, we're going to design a smaller duct here transitioning to a larger duct. So because we've got a transition here, it starts the turbulence over, but it is a fitting that we have to account for. And so when you look at the group two fittings, you'll see the transition is indicated as a K fitting and it is associated with 15 feet of equivalent length. Therefore, run number one will have the K fitting with 15 feet. At this point now, the air has gotten back to what we refer to as the return air drop. And now you're looking at this location in your duct system. So, we are recommending to go with this B fitting. Uh, if price is the ultimate um, consideration, then you would want to go with this A fitting because the A fitting is simply some ductwork. You just cut a hole in the bottom of the trunk and you attach it. There's actually no, there's no fitting involved such as this B fitting. And this B fitting is referred to as an expanded collar and you can see it looks a bit like a funnel it's got a larger area connecting to the duct and it transitions down to a to the smaller duct size simply helps to convey the air from the trunk down into the return drop more effectively and so that's a B fitting and it's got 35 feet of equivalent length and so that is our trunk to drop connection, B35. Finally, we're back at the furnace. We are suggesting to go with the C fitting since it's a nice free flowing fitting. And so we've got our C fitting at 10 feet. That assesses all of the equivalent lengths. The next thing we need to do is measure the actual length. On the second floor, typically the cold air return grill is mounted about one foot down from the ceiling. So whatever the height of the second floor is, 
you would deduct one foot and then you start at that point. Now in our situation, this floor is eight feet high. So if the grill is approximately one foot down from the ceiling, then we've got seven feet. So there's a vertical drop of seven feet. That gets us to the floor of the second floor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we've got the header area of the first floor. So the air goes through an additional one foot. Now it reaches the top of the first floor. In this house, the first floor is also eight feet tall. So the air now travels through an additional eight feet of vertical space. Now the air gets into the basement. And at this point, the air turns and travels through the joy space. So because this is a two-dimensional drawing and we cannot see the vertical heights, uh, we have to account for them. So always remember that there will be vertical height associated with all of the return airs. Now here we can measure the horizontal distance and I recommend you simply measure from the center of the fitting over to the center of the duct. In, in this instance we've got about two and a half feet and so with duct design you simply round that up to the, the next hole number. Now we want to measure back to our return drop. Once again I'm going to measure roughly from the center of the drop to the center of our return and we've got approximately 10 feet. So at this point we've got 7 feet on the second floor, we've got 1 foot through the first floor header, we've got 8 feet through the first floor, and now we've got four, uh, 3 feet running horizontal from the plate opening over to the duct, now we've got 10 feet going over to our drop, and because the basement is 7 feet tall, and our drop essentially extends from the ceiling all the way down, we would add seven feet. And so now you would total this up and that total should equal 37 feet. Once, now that you've got the measured length, you can add up all of the equivalent lengths plus the measured length to get your total effective branch length. Now you simply would repeat this process for all of the return errors that we are proposing for this particular house.